All righty, everybody. Welcome back. Today, we're going to go over this EKG, and I just want to kind of set the clinical scenario for this. This is going to be a young 18-year-old male with palpitations and lightheadedness. So, young male comes into the emergency department. Palpitations, lightheadedness. This is the EKG that you get. So, let's take a look at it. It's quite rapid. We can see that if we just kind of look down at this lead two rhythm strip, we've got some R to R intervals that are, you know, that right here would be a 300 feet per minute R to R. We've got some slower ones here that are around maybe 130. And it's, we can see that these R to Rs are not regular. Some of them are larger compared to the other ones. This is not a regular rhythm. We can see we've kind of have these slurry QRSs here where they're they're, just, they're not narrow, but they're not perfectly wide. So it's on the cusp, it's right about 120 milliseconds. Not what you would expect out of a young individual. You can see here in in V3, kind of a slurry QRS, right? So we would say I would lean more towards wide. And so, okay, it's a very rapid rate. We'll say the average is 200 to 220 beats per minute. We know that the sinus node does not beat that fast. So what is the atria doing? And when I see these pauses, I don't see any good atrial activity uh, when I look in front of some of these QRSs here. I'm not seeing very good atrial activity. And we've got this very rapid ventricular rate. Uh, so I would I would go ahead and say that this is AFib. But is this AFib with RVR, right? Well, we know the, we've got a rapid ventricular response, but you know, part of that implies that this is going through the AV node. I would say that this is likely AFib with pre-excitation. And if you remember uh, why, we would say probably this is AFib with potential pre-excitation is, you know, these are patients that have Wolf, Parkinson, White, and they've got a, a, a accessory pathway that allows for these fibrillatory waves from the atria, since this is AFib, to pass through the ventricles. And so I'll give you just a quick review. So somebody that has an accessory pathway has, say, a communication between the atria and the ventricles that allows for signal to go down. And so this is a, you know, a problem in AFib, because if you have AFib with this accessory pathway, you have these fibrillatory waves that are just kind of sporadically going through the atria that are rapidly conducting very quickly. Remember, the AV node typically can slow down this signal so that when someone goes into AFib, this AV node is protective in AFib because the AV node can only conduct so fast. However, this accessory pathway is just normal cardiac cells that will conduct that signal rapidly. Rapid conduction. And so people that have a Wolf Parkinson White, aka pre-excitation, when they develop AFib, when they develop AFib, they have an extremely rapid rate, and it'll be a wide QRS. And that's because when this signal 
passes into the, the from the atria to the ventricles and it depolarizes the ventricles, it's not taking the his Purkinje system, and so that's slow depolarization. So if we go look back at our EKG, that is why we see this irregular rhythm where these R to R's are not consistent, and it's a wide QRS. And so if this person was unstable, we would, uh, so unstable is cardiovert. And that's with electricity. And so uh, let's take a look and see what happens if we cardiovert this individual, which we luckily have that post-cardioversion EKG. And so let's take a look at this EKG. So I've got a regular rhythm here. I've got a rate of roughly 300, 150, 175, so probably 80 beats per minute. It's regular. Let's see what, you know, we've got some interesting, you know, T waves here. Don't seem to be going with the the normal axis of our QS, but let's take a look at our P waves. We've got P waves. If we look here in lead two, P waves seem to be flat up here in lead one, but downward in AVF. So I'm going to say this is probably sinus, right? We just cardioverted, and this is a 80 beats per minute. It's regular. That's typical. That's typical sinus node behavior. We know the sinus node beats 60 to 100 beats per minute. But if you look at this EKG, if I look, say, lead two is a great lead here. If you look, that PR interval was short. It's about 80 milliseconds. The normal PR interval is 120 to 200 milliseconds. And if you notice, we've also got this slurred delta wave. You can see that in multiple leads that if you look in V5, it's got this P wave, and then you've got this slurry delta wave. V6, you've got this nice slurry delta wave right all the way through a lot of these leads. And so this person, um, this is just showing more evidence for that free excitation. And so this is an EKG that we could expect. Remember, in a younger patient, so there's not been a lot of wear and tear on the heart, so they might have diagnosed Wolf Parkinson White syndrome. And so because of this pre-excitation that we're seeing, that also explains some of these, you know, ST and T wave changes, as it is is not you know, we are not repolarizing in the same typical fashion as depolarization because remember the delta wave is due to that that accessory pathway because these individuals, what's going on is their sinus node is firing. You get atrial depolarization. The AV node takes that and we know that the AV node delays conduction by 120 to 200 milliseconds, right? That's our PR interval. However, this accessory pathway that we said this person has does not delay and go ahead and send signal down and starts to depolarize the ventricles. And this is causing a slurred delta wave at the same time, once it gets to about this point, the AV node says, okay, it's been 120 to 200 milliseconds. Let's send the signal down and depolarize uh, the rest of the ventricles in the rapid fashion that we typically see with the Hisperkinji system. And so what the delta wave is, is just we're seeing the merge of that pre-excitation pathway with normal conduction. So this right here, this slurry delta wave, this represents the pre excited cells of the ventricle. And then the rest of this nice narrow QRS is the normal conduction. And so really this is just a good case study to understand why it is scary 
to go into AFib with Wolf Parkinson White because that AV node, whenever the AV node is saving us during AFib in Wolf Parkinson White, the AV node is um, being bypassed by the accessory pathway. And so because of that, we need to give an antiarrhythmic or a cardioversion electrically to stop that. The antiarrhythmic of choice in a patient with Wolf Parkinson White is not going to be a medicine that halts the AV node. So what we don't want to do, we don't want to give AV node blockers in AFib with both Parkinson White, because if we block the AV node, if we block the AV node, then the signal from that AFib that's just shooting around, all it has is this accessory pathway in the rate, and the rate will increase even more with AV node blockers. And that's whenever they have that AFib. We think of AFib, typically we would give AV node blockers like diltizem or verapamil or metoprolol. However, in this case, if we block the AV node when someone has AFib with Wolf Parkinson White, all we're telling it is saying, use that accessory pathway more and faster and they're going to get more unstable. So I hope that kind of helps give the clinical picture. Um, and I hope you enjoyed comparing and contrasting these two EKGs that I thought were really helpful in getting your um, understanding of when you're seeing this patient that might be at risk for having a pre-excitation pathway to get it in your head that this is not your typical AFib. These rates are way faster than with the AV node. AV node, doing a different color. The AV node can't conduct this fast. And so because of that, we can say this person likely has a pre-excitation pathway. So hope that helps. Have a great day.